last night, and Lauren Forte almost doubling up with blocks and kills last night. Nine blocks, eight kills. Expect him to have a big night tonight as well. For sure. You know, I didn't even, you asking the question, can you get a double-double with blocks and kills? And at first, I, you know, I never thought about it because I've never seen somebody get uh, so close to double digits and blocks before. Really awesome performance from those two, and I expect to see more of that tonight. As we get ready to get underway here, head coaches for the Razorbacks going to be Jason Watson in his sixth season. Still looking for the signature win. Can get that one tonight. Wasn't able to last night, but able to get the signature win possibly on Saturday as they try and get into the postseason. And there you see her, head coach Mary Wise, only five wins away now from the career thousand mark, trying to become the first Head, female head coach in collegiate volleyball to accomplish that. As her Florida Gators have been a stalwart of the SEC, winning 24 SEC championships while she's been here. And the Gators will get us underway with Thayer Hall from the service line. Hall, the senior out of Spartanburg, South Carolina, one of five on this team, will get us underway. And immediately be a point for the Gators as Crumpton's shot will miss some hands and go out of play. So those opportunities the Razorbacks need. Uh, Crumpton only had one block on her. I like that choice from Gracie. Crumpton just hitting it a little bit too wide. Well, Jill Gillen will catch some fingertips on that attack, get the kill, and level us back out at one apiece here in set number one. As we'll see, Gracie Ryan, the senior out of Orlando, Florida, from the service line here first. And an easy kill there for Merritt Beast in her first on the night. The freshman had a good night out last night. And she got seven kills to her name. And Cartwright able to drop that one in with the off-speed attack. I imagine Razorback fans want her to have a big night after struggling a little bit last night on Friday night. For sure. Uh, nice heads-up play by Cartwright, recognizing the libero for Florida. McKissick plays a little bit deep on defense, catching her on her heels a little bit. That serve there for Gillen, clocking in at 41 miles an hour. As Razorback's going to have to get one over, Head will be able to do that. But there's Tiara Caesar making an impact here early with the kill on the outside. Really nice swing by Caesar. Florida does such a great job when they're in system. It's really hard to defend. They have all three hitters are in the front row are a great option. So the middle blockers for Arkansas really going to need to stay disciplined. It makes it difficult to close that block. And Cartwright will get another kill. They're able to hit it down off the block of the Gators. Arkansas uh, been struggling a little bit getting the, the middles going uh, at least last night. So really important to have that right side going uh, in this set tonight or in this match tonight to help pull some pressure off the outside hitters. Caesar able to get a hand to that one as Cartwright went off speed again. And a big block there from Abigail Archibong will put the Razorbacks in front. And this is something we saw last night, Caitlin. Razorbacks able to keep with Florida early on in sets. Be interesting to see if Coach Watson's made some adjustments to possibly see if the Razorbacks can pull away in these sets. No service error there for Lauren Evans won't help the cause as it'll be back over to the Gators. That was something we talked about, Caitlin. Razorback struggled with a little bit last night as well. 
uh, having, I believe, more service errors than aces last night. Yes, you know, it doesn't always show up in the stats when you're serving. Well, you don't need always need an ace, but you need to get them out of system, and the Gators were just in system too much of the time. Pancake there from Tiara Caesar. Keeps the point alive. And Taylor Head able to find the corner out past the arch outstretched arm of Merritt Beeson. It'll be a two-point advantage for the Razorbacks. Awesome play. We saw in the earlier uh, play, Taylor had one with a short tip, then switches it up a little bit, going to that deep corner. Really difficult ball to defend. It dropped right perfectly in that deep right back. Hannah Hogue at the service line. We saw her last night uh, in some action. The freshman getting some points and will stay at the service line is three-point lead for the Razorbacks early in set one. Hogue out of Fort Smith, so a native Arkansan to the program. As Thayer Beeson, or excuse me, Thayer Hall will terminate that at the feet of Jill Gillen to end the Razorback run. Yeah, we saw a little bit of a hole in the block there, and she takes a full advantage. Uh, when you're not getting any type of touch at the net, you're asking a lot of your defenders to try to get that ball up. And again, another back row find for the Razorbacks. Nice play by the Hogs. You see uh, Gracie Ryan, the setter, is in the front row, so she only has two options. I like that decision to go to middle back. She only had one blocker up and was able to put it away. And an error there from Libero for Florida, number 23, Ellie McKissick. We'll awesome. make this a three-point set. Awesome dig by Courtney Jackson, the libero for the Razorbacks. There was no uh, touch on the block. She delivered a perfect dig for the Razorbacks, put that over to force the error. And a good cross-court find there from Bree Kelly. Really awesome play. So uh, Gator is running that 5-1 offense, meaning there's only one setter on the court at all times. She was in the front row, so there's only two hitters, so Razorbacks really need to have two blockers up in that situation. There's only two folks they can go to. Uh, Florida hitters are just too good. Well, a rare error there from Marley Monzere. We'll get the ball back to the Razorbacks on the service line is libero Courtney Jackson will serve, freshman out of Olathe, Kansas. Had eight digs last night, and she'll get this one over the net. Pancake there from Caesar, poked over by Monzere. And that one just in front of Monzere, as he tried to pancake as well. And Arkansas, the first one to double figures here in set one, Caitlin. Some good rallies back and forth. Some really good defense on Arkansas side of the net. Florida's having a little bit trouble controlling the ball, passing a little bit too tight, especially with their setter in the back row. And that one played off the net by McKissick. And Caesar has to go to the ground to dig that one out. And that one just sent down by Bree Kelly. Give her two kills here in set number one. Nice save by setter Monterey. They're keeping the ball off the net. Just a one-handed set for Bree Kelly to put it away. Head trying to dump that one over in the front corner. But Fair Hall will hit off the middle attack of the Razorbacks and will keep rolling at the service line. Really nice high swing by Hall. 
It's fun to see the, the hits go straight down, but those balls that go off the high hands are virtually impossible to dig. And that one coming over towards us is Elise Crumpton will terminate that one. I like that play from the Razorbacks. Uh, Crumpton going behind. So we see a lot of the quick sets right in front of the setter, but decides to go behind. It's only in a one-on-one -on -one situ situation and takes a full advantage. And another kill for Bree Kelly. The freshman has three so far in this set, leading the team. Such a wide range. She does a really nice job finding both sides of the sidelines. Hitting right at 500 early here, and that one played off the tape from the McKissick serve. And Gillen will get the kill off the hands of the Florida block as Arkansas still staying in the lead here early, Caitlin. Talked about Thayer Hall doing a nice job finding the high hands. Gillen also doing a nice job on that last play. When those balls goes off the high hands, you have to be really fast as a defender to dig those. Block there for Arkansas. And the point will go to Florida as Cartwright try to find some hands in the back row. And it'll be Merritt Beeson at the service line once more for the Gators. Beeson out of Gardendale, Alabama. And a block from Elise Crumpton as the Razorbacks playing really well here early in set one. Awesome discipline I work from Crumpton staying on her hitters, a one-on-one -on -one situation, still gets this stuff. Just really good handwork at the net as well, pressing uh, low and over. Senior Lauren Evans for Arkansas at the service line there. As that one will be out of play is Marley Monsere tried to play it around the block of the Razorbacks. Monsere, where she is on the court, she doesn't have a whole lot of court to work with if she's in her typical setter position. That's in the donut hole and a kill every time, but when you're about you know eight feet in front of that, there's not as much court to work with. And that one looks like a miss hit there from Lauren Forte. And the Razorbacks will be the first one to 15 in set number one. As both teams will head to the huddles for the media timeout. And we'll return with set one after this. Uh, you know, they're spending half their time hitting and half their time passing. Nice uh, choice. Staying away from that libero who you know is a very good passer. And out of system again are the Gators on the service. As that'll draw a timeout from head coach Mary Wise. As Florida trailing by seven points here in set number one. If you're coach Wise, what adjustments can you make here in this timeout, being down seven points, really the first deficit they've faced in these two matches. You know, you got to take care of that first ball. They're passing everything really tight to the net. Uh, um, and, and just making everything just a little bit too difficult, right? It's kind of going back to basics, uh, as we like to say, in a bunch of different sports, right? Just t control what you can control, and they're just making too many errors. Well, we'll see if those adjustments work for Coach Wise as he's coaching her girls up all time the Gators and the Razorbacks the series favors uh, the Gators 47 and 3 all time as this will be the 51st meeting between the two as Florida quick to break the huddle here out of the timeout as the ball will stay with the Razorbacks. 
Lauren Evans at the service line here. Getting a degree in marketing at the University of Arkansas. As the senior gets us back underway. Archer Bong will tip that one over to the back row. Head keeping it alive for the Razorbacks, and she'll attack, but no success there. But that one will be a big time kill for Tiara Caesar. That'll end this Razorback run. Really pushing the tempo in system. You can see the block is really late, only because the set is happening so fast. Essentially leaves an open net for Caesar to put it away. She gets the kill, and will head to the service line. That's two kills so far tonight, and another attack there for Abigail Archibong that'll play off Lauren Forte. She'll get the kill. Arkansas been doing a really nice job taking care of that first ball, so it gives all three options to Setter, Ryan. Like that choice, we're seeing a little bit more um, action from the middles, get those middles established early, puts a lot more pressure on the Gator blockers. Hogue will serve here. And looks like that one caught some hands potentially and for Tiara Caesar. She'll get another kill in set number one. Big key for the Razorbacks to uh, t try to take this match tonight is try to stop Caesar. We know she had such a great night last night. I think having 17 kills as an outside hitter and only three sets is really fantastic. They're doing a pretty good job so far uh, slowing her down. And that one will drop in for Bree Kelly, who will lead the Gators with four kills. Perfect four for four so far here in the match. Four attacks, four kills. As Trinity Adams will serve that one into the net and put the Razorbacks just that much closer to a set one victory. Taylor Head with a deep serve there to Tiara Caesar. And Gillen will get the kill as Arkansas five points away from a set victory. You know, I'd like to say Gillen earned that point, right? She ended the rally, but I think it's really a lot attributed to Head. The Gators were out of system. It forced the free ball, forced a nice, easy play for the Razorbacks. And like you were saying, Caitlin, that's something that doesn't necessarily end up in the stat category. Right. But has been a lot of success for the Razorbacks. His head will get another kill. And that will be the second timeout from head coach. Welcome back to Historic Barnhill Arena. I'm Stephen Black, alongside me, the former Hurricane Caitlin Donahoe. And that's Taylor Head, the sophomore from Winter Garden, Florida, at the service line. And she'll get us back underway. And as Thayer Hall will drop that one in, be her third kill on the evening. You know, we talk about a lot of time we, we want hitters to tip, but Thayer Hall does such a nice job going up and over the block. It has that downward trajectory. It makes it really hard to get a hand on. And that one easily killed there by Abigail Archibong. Her second kill on the night will make this three points away from the set victory for the Razorbacks. Getting Archibong and Crumpton uh, going is going to be really important from the Razorbacks. You can tell they're doing a really nice job early in this first set. It makes your blockers on the opposing side respect the middle, stay, and then just helps out everyone. It helps out both pins. 
And that one just a bit wide on the attack as the points keep rolling in for Arkansas. As libero Courtney Jackson will stay at the service line. Florida just going to get that one over. And Elise Crumpton with another kill here in set one. Her third on the night will make this set point for Arkansas. Florida really struggling on serve receive, delivering a lot of free balls to Arkansas side, who's doing a nice job putting away. Monzeré able to dig that one out. Head from the back row will miss. And that'll be the end of the uh, service attack for the Razorbacks. And we'll send Thayer Hall for Florida back to serve. And Beeson will play that one off. Elise Crumpton for the kill as Florida trying to inch back in in set number one. So in that situation, we know Caesar dug the first ball. The ball's likely not going her way. I'd like to see Crumpton kind of get a head start going to her left uh, to get the block. And that'll be how set one ends. Service error there for Thayer Hall will give set one victory to Arkansas 25-16. The first set, the Florida Gators have uh, for the Razorbacks to really solidify their entry into the NCAA tournament. Jackson will get us underway. As that one knocked down easily for Bree Kelly. As her perfect night thus far continues. Five kills, five total attacks. See the Razorbacks still going after uh, Tiara Caesar serving wise, but she delivers a nice pass. Kelly trying to get the block there. And Kelly will get the block on that one. And she's stepping up tonight. The freshman out of Rockwall having a big game so far. Really good eye work and footwork from the freshman middle blocking. Middle blocker position is so difficult. There's so many different things to watch. Uh, she does a nice job closing the block. That'll be a kill for the Razorbacks in their first point of set number two. We'll send Gracie Ryan to the service line. The Orlando native will commit the service error there. And we'll send Ellie McKissick, the libero, for Florida to the service line, who's from Windermere, Florida, right down the road from Orlando. So I imagine at some point in time, they played against each other. As that dig will go across the net and a block for Florida. will extend their lead a little more here in set number two. Great block and handwork by Caesar. Like to see Cartwright uh, in that situation, maybe go a little bit more angle. We see Forte was late to the block. There's just more court available on the angle. That one going to play off of Lauren Forte's head. And it'll be a point for the Arkansas Razorbacks. Jill will check with the bench to see now she wants to serve this ball. And I'd imagine Coach Watch and the coaching <laughs> staff didn't call that one up. No, I don't think so. That one's not in the rotation. And with that error, it'll put reigning freshman of the week, Merritt Beeson, at the service line for Florida.
Has great rally here for both sides. Gracie Ryan able to handle the attack of Tiara Caesar in an air there. We'll give the point to Florida. Saw some big digs on both sides of the net. Thinking uh, Head was looking for some high hands. She wasn't in a great position to swing. And that sails pretty deep. Soft serve there from Beeson as Joe Gillen barely gets to it. But there will be another point for Florida. As the Gators are rolling with Beeson at the service line here, Caitlin. Yeah, Florida's been doing a much better job this set versus set one blocking at the net. Seen a couple of stuffs, a couple of uh, just straight down blocks. Another block there for Florida. As Cartwright will try again, and this time will be successful. Be her third kill on the evening. As Archibong and Lauren Evans will check in for the Razorbacks. As Cartwright will send that one out of play off Tiara Caesar attack. So close there, Cartwright and Archibong in a good position. Really uh, just a little bit of handwork could really fix that and turn it into a step block. As Tiara Caesar comes in with a thunderous attack <laughs> there into the back row of the Arkansas volleyball team. That play is so fun to watch. So Caesar is playing that right back position for a couple of rotations when she's in the back row. Makes it a really quick set from setter to hitter. And you can't really tell if she's in the front or back row. And that one ricochets off Jill Gellin for the point. I don't think she can believe it. <laughs> but she's pumped up. Uh, that's a, a lucky play, but, you know, I'd rather be lucky than good. And give that kill to Jill Gillen's shoulder. That'll do it. As Hannah Hogue will send that one long on the serve and commit the service error. And Forte will check out for the Gators, and Trinity Adams will check in at the service line. Head will try the block again there with the off speed, but nothing going. Is that one an easy kill there for Thayer Hall? Tough situation, overpass from the Gators. You got to handle that first ball. Uh, Archibong typically doesn't pass. Uh, See maybe just a little bit of confusion on who's going to take the ball. I'd like to see the back row kind of step up, take that first ball, let Archibong. Well, welcome back for some volleyball action on Saturday between the number 22 ranked Florida Gators and the Arkansas Razorbacks. If you're just joining us, Arkansas won set number one, 25 at 16, and currently trail Florida 11-4 here in set number two as head coach Jason Watson and the Razorbacks took a timeout try and break the concentration and momentum that Trinity Adams has had from the service line here in set number two. Nearly getting an ace there. And that one going to go long. Couldn't find any hands there. And Trinity Adams will stay at the service line. The Gators doing a nice job in this second set, putting a lot of pressure on the Razorbacks serving-wise. And that one will go out of play. A little bit of miscommunication, it seems, between Ryan and Archibong. Either that ball was a little bit too high or Archibong uh, 
was a little early. It seemed like she was kind of hanging in the air for just a little bit too long. Makes it easier to make those uh, hits wide. And a service ace for Trinity Adams. First statistical category that she'll get into on the evening. Had zeros across the board uh, on everything else. But an ace coming here and set. Number two makes this a 10-point advantage for Florida. As Taylor Head will work around the block with the kill. We've that one head off Bree Kelly there on the block for Florida. Nice swing, kind of just sneaking it through. Need to take advantage of those uh, opportunities when Monterey, who's still a very good blocker, but she's in the front row. She's not quite as big as the other right side hitters for the Gators. And Head just going to have to send it over. Joust at the net. As Gillen laying out for it. And she'll get up. And she'll get the kill. I think she uh, took her approach from off of the ground when she was still trying to get up from getting that ball over. What a fantastic uh, just effort. You can see her. She's starting her approach with her hands on the ground, which is very atypical, <laughs> does a nice job still finding that deep left back. And I imagine that's kind of the connection setter Gracie Ryan has with her attackers is like, I'll, I know Jill's over there somewhere. I'll <laughs> just send it up there. Hopefully she'll get it. <laughs> yes, you know she's gonna she's getting up as fast as she can. Well, Jill now has seven kills on the evening. Had one off her shoulder and one from the <laughs> ground. And she's leaving it all out on the volleyball court tonight. Yeah, certainly the most variety we've seen so far. As Marley Monzere will commit the service error and allow Arkansas to close a little closer here in set number two. Arkansas already doing better than the last two times they faced off against the Gators as both both matches were 3-0 sweeps for Florida. A little miscommunication there from Hall and Monzere. As Beeson will play that off the fingers of Gracie Ryan for the kill and make this a 16-7 set number two. Beeson is, does such a nice job with those finesse shots. She never seems to be looking where she's going. How, how, however, sometimes she just knows it's open. And that one will miss some hands for Jill Gillen. And the ball will stay with Thayer Hall. Looks like the Razorback players were pretty adamant that that found some hands. And that one will be terminated in play for Jill Gillen. Kill number eight on the night, two away from her total from match number one last night here at Barnhill. Such composure. She does a nice job. You know, as an outside hitter, you get a whole lot of attempts. The sets not, are not always the best, right? She does a nice job with the first one, just controlling the ball, getting another opportunity to find the set that she can terminate, and does a nice job. And that'll be a kill just like that. Back to the other side for Florida. And that was something we talked about with Coach Watson this week with these double headers. We're seeing you know, Joe Gillen play a lot better here on the second night. Coaching staff for Arkansas doesn't want to overload the players with information on night number two. And I think you're seeing that as Joe will get another kill off the block from Florida. Totally, especially important, you know, to take those big swings when the set is there, but when it's not there, finding a smart shot in the court. Uh, it's not expected to get a kill every time, right? We know as outside hitter, 250, 300 is a good night. So that means sometimes you just got to give it to a good spot and set yourself up for the next time. Well, Jill's right at 33%. As Arkansas will get another point there. As Lauren Forte... Not having 
a great night like she did last night, nearly a double-double last night with points and blocks, or excuse me, kills and blocks tonight. Five attempts, five errors. And Elise Crumpton just going to send that down as Arkansas putting together a little bit of a run here, trying to close the deficit in set number two. Crumpton gets the stat, and she did a great job, but uh, it all goes to Jill Gillen forcing that overpass to put a nice uh, kill. Or It's kind of like Crumpton, or pardon me, Gillen set up that assist for Crumpton to put away. Well, service error there for Jill. As checking in to the match will be Lauren Dooley. First time we've seen her these two nights. The senior out of Plano is a towering presence in the center at 6'6", tallest player on the roster for Florida. And Florida out of system. And Arkansas take advantage as Taylor Head will get the kill. Nice, smart job by Head. Uh, Beeson is in the back row. She wasn't able to jump, and she was the only one around, so she simply just had to stand there. Uh, nice job by Head, just staying out of the net, forcing that ball down. As Beeson going to laser one at Jill Gillen, she's able to dig it out. And Taylor Head will find some open space. Give her six kills on the evening as Arkansas charging back here in set number two. Some amazing volleyball. What an awesome dig by Gillen. Uh, just keeping it alive and setting up Taylor to put it away. First time Caesars had an attempt at a kill. As Florida just going to have to get it over. And Taylor Head off speed. Beeson will lay out for it. And looks like Monzare was possibly in the net there. Interesting call because you can be in the net as long as you're out of play. So I'm thinking maybe the ball might have touched the net before she got there. But uh, Monzare was a little bit confused as well. It looks like uh, the officials are going to look it over at the replay desk. But at the moment, Arkansas closing the gap, 19-14 in favor of Florida. But I'd have to say one of the things I think, as we just talked about, another error there on the serve for Tiara Caesar. Yeah, so in this rotation, it looks like they're in rotation four. Um, so the outside hitters are next to each other passing. Uh, they're really going to go after that scene between those guys. Well, Caesar able to play that one as Thayer Hall will get the kill. Her sixth on the night. Hall's really been having a nice night so far. No errors. Here's she the co-SEC player of the week, Tiara Caesar for the Gators at the service line. And Monzare just going to send that over. And the height there from Dooley paying off for Florida. But Arkansas fighting back. Maggie Cartwright will send it to the back row. And Tiara Caesar will get her first kill in quite some time. Give her six on the evening. Good playing back and forth. A lot of great digs from Arkansas. Uh, Got to Things for them there, right? That kill was almost off a miss hit. Um, but nice job on both sides of the net, keeping the ball alive for so long. Cartwright will find Beeson in the back. As Joe Gillen trying to lay out for that one near the Arkansas cheerleaders. Uh, in the back of the court, she's laying it all out on the court tonight. And it'll be a timeout from Arkansas. Is Florida only a couple of points away from a set victory. We'll step away momentarily 
and at the conclusion of set number two after this. Welcome back to 80s night here at Barnhill as the number 22 Florida Gators have exactly that in set number two, 22-15 as Tiara Caesar will operate from Panama City, Florida. One of the five seniors on this volleyball team. And Lauren Dooley with her first block of the match, that 6-6 frame in the center paying dividends here for Mary Wise. She's a really good blocker. And, you know, talking to Coach Mary Wise earlier this week, really had such nice things to say about uh, Dooley. You know, you're a senior. She hasn't been starting um, as much this year as she would have liked, I'm sure, but does a really nice job when she does come on the court, has a great attitude, and really gives it her all. And Tiara Caesar will play that one off Courtney Jackson, and that will end up in the first row of the seats here at Barnhill. As just like that out of the timeout, it is set point for Florida. Soft serve from Caesar. It will be handled. And Beeson can't convert off the block as Arkansas has life here in set number two. Nice block, nice work by Head coming all the way over to her right to close the block with Archibong sending that ball straight down. Anna Hogue at the service line. Last time she served, it was an error. But able to keep this one in play. And will dig Thayer Hall's attack. As Taylor Head just going to sneak that one in. Nice work. See uh, freshman Ho come in, her first start last night, pays dividends. You know, she's a setter as well, able to deliver that second ball in system, fast tempo to the net for Head to get the kill. And Dooley will terminate that kill, and that'll be how set number two ends. Florida winning 25-17. We're tied at one set apiece. Playing to five sets tonight here at Barnhill. First one to win three will win the match. We'll step away with set three on the other side. Dominate in conference, but Mississippi State Bulldogs beating the Tennessee Volunteers three sets to one earlier today. Looks like Mississippi State is for real in this <laughs> conference. I say so. Been doing a nice job turning it around. In uh, second in the SEC, we could probably expect to see them ranked overall here uh, as we come out of this weekend. Yeah, you only got a measly two points last <laughs> time out in the polls, I imagine. Yeah, they're going to shoot up uh, after beating the number 24 ranked team in the country in Tennessee. As we get ready to go here in set number three, it'll be Marley Monsray to serve here for Florida. And the Arkansas Razorbacks will be playing those Mississippi State Bulldogs in a couple weeks with a doubleheader right back here at Barn Hill on November 20th and 21st. You can watch that. As well as all the other matches on the SEC Network. As Tiara Caesar almost crashing into head coach Murray Wise there to play that ball. And Gillen going to slide into the table. Hopefully she's all right. But that'll be the first point for Florida here in set number three. Again, laying it all out tonight. Trying to get a signature win as a Razorback. It's a great block by the Gators. Impressive that Jackson even got a hand on it to give 
Gillen a chance to get the second touch. There, Hall will wind up and get the kill. Her eighth on the evening. Puts her in the lead ahead of her teammate, T.R. Caesar, by one on the night. She's hitting a, a cool 364. Good night for her. After only having four kills last night, but a kill there for Arkansas. Great play. Going to the middle off the net, about eight feet off. Really great delivery to Crumpton and kind of just sneaks it through. Crumpton having a nice night so far. Six kills with only one error. Pancake there, unsuccessful. As Elise Crumpton will get another kill in the middle. Razorbacks don't tend to go to her too often, but when they do, she's had some great success here against the Gators. Totally on those good passes. I like that we can see Ryan's running forward, decides to just dish a quick set behind. Crumpton had absolutely no block, so easy kill there. And Beeson works around the block for the kill. Gives her four on the night. And Thayer Hall will serve. Yet to record an ace tonight. And that one blocked by Elise Crumpton as Arkansas knots things back up at three here in set number three. Nice shot by Arkansas having all three blockers up. Not sure if that ball from Hall was ever going to make it over. And Tiara Caesar with the kill. Gives her eight. Long way to go to equal her 17 from last night. But it'll put her teammate Ellie McKissick, the libero, at the service line. Service error there for the libero. It'll be right back to the Razorbacks as Lauren Evans goes back to the service line. Already has two aces on the evening as targeted Tiara Caesar a lot from that service position, Caitlin. Jolly will see if she does it again. Hall with a nice pass. You know, even a, an average pass from Caesar, whoever is the front row hitter, might be a better situation than a, a not so good pass. It's really the stats tell you that passing and hitting, uh, you're just not as effective when you have to pass and then swing. So uh, I would think that the Razorbacks are still trying to go after Caesar, especially having so much success in that first set. Well, here in set number three, the Gators at the service line keeping the Razorbacks in this one. Tied at five apiece now. As Hannah Hogue will serve. And that'll be another point for the Razorbacks as Thayer Hall with the air on the service return attempt. The Gators have really been struggling in this serve receive rotation. So rotation four, Hall and Caesar are next to each other in that uh, left back position, the Razorbacks really going after it. And that block gonna bounce off Tiara Caesar's head. And it'll be a point for the Razorbacks as the Hogs will take a two point advantage. On the match, Florida has six service errors so far, just to their one A, so definitely a number head coach Murray Wise will wanna see improve, as that one will kiss off the tape there, Caitlin. Yeah, nice serve from Hogue, still going after Caesar. And TR Caesar learns her lesson there and goes off speed and dumps it behind the block of Arkansas. Yes, it just 
clears Ryan. That ball is, even if you're standing right at the 10 foot line as a defender, it's going to be really hard to dig. It almost looks like it's gonna hit the back of Ryan. It's so short. Beeson able to play the attack from Taylor Head. And T.R. Caesar can't quite get to the pancake. Be another point for Arkansas here. Can expect to see their Razorbacks exploit that a little bit more. So Caesar plays in that right back position. It looks like for one of the three rotations where she's in the back row, struggling a little bit getting those balls up. And so those are some easy kills that I uh, can expect to see Arkansas go back to. Beeson will lay out. And McKissick just going to have to play it over. As a rare kill there for Gracie Ryan. Sneaks that one past the unsuspecting Florida Gators. Those are those situations. So those wing diggers, so whoever's in right and left back, really nice heads up play. As I just said, Caesar is struggling a little bit, picking up the tips. Those are those times where you want to get those easy points. With that kill, that's the 21st kill for Gracie Ryan just this season, equaling her jersey number. As Archibong will find the middle, makes it 10-6. And that'll be a timeout from Mary Wise. As the Razorback fans that have come out for the second day of volleyball action here at Barnhill Arena are getting to their feet here. In this timeout, Caitlin, we've seen Arkansas is attacking T.R. Caesar. She's added nine more. As her stellar sophomore season continues for the Razorbacks. As Tiara Caesar will get a kill and she'll be in double figures. First player for either side to do so tonight. As Trinity Adams will go back to the service line, one of four freshmen on this Florida volleyball team. And Archibong will work around the block of the Gators. Gets her fourth kill on the night and will check out. Archibong been doing a really nice job, especially late in the match. A little bit better connection between Ryan and Archibong, especially with that wrist away shot. So those balls that are going to her right, she's finding a lot of success. Bree Kelly tried to find the back row there for Florida. I think Mary Wise wanted a, a double hit there. Yeah, she seemed pretty adamant that Ryan doubled that ball standing up from her bench. Uh, but ultimately, they get the point anyway. Really awesome set by Montserrat dishing it to the back row. You really can't tell if she's going to set the front or the back row, always squaring up to that outside pin. Well, Gillen will play that one off the block. Gives her 10 kills on the night. And she leads the Razorbacks in that category. Gillen really been working hard tonight. We know she's only five foot seven going against, you know, some six foot four, maybe even six foot six blockers, still finding a way to get it done. And looks like an early jump there for Maggie Cartwright that'll be advantageous as Beeson not able to play that one in play. Oh 
And Gillen will sneak one past T.R. Caesar in the back. Awesome and play from the Razorbacks. And all started with a fantastic serve from Ryan. The Gators were out of system from the get-go. Looked like Mary Wise wanted a, an under call. Maybe Ryan was a little bit under the net, which you can't do, but uh, they get the point anyway. And the ball be back for the Gators. After that error from Courtney Jackson. At the service line, Thayer Hall, three-time AVCA All-American. Honorable mention a couple of times and a third-team member in 2019, but it will be a point for Arkansas. As you mentioned, the 5'7", Jill Gillen at the service line. As Beeson tried cross court on her attack, and there was into the net. Beeson really likes that across the court tip shot, but uh, never cleared the tape there. As that one will sail long for Jill Gillen. Put the ball back for the Gators. And as Ellie McKissick, reigning SEC Defensive Player of the Week, will serve. We're lucky enough to have the uh, speedometer here. And uh, just for reference, Gillen served going 42 miles an hour to McKissick's 39. And McKissick's 39 mile an hour serve was pretty fast. You know, for a jump float serve is anywhere, a good serve is about 40. So. A lot of pace behind Gillen's jump float serve. Well, that respectively was Arkansas' sixth service error and Florida's eighth on the night. As Cartwright will fire through the block, Murray Wise will take her second time out of set number three. As the Razorbacks playing with some fire here, Caitlin. Totally. The, uh, the Gators look like they're a little bit out of sorts, a little bit of uh, very rare miscommunication between Monterey and her hitters, delivering some easy balls for the Razorbacks to convert. We saw a couple of plays where a Caesar had to tip instead of just having the luxury of tipping. Those are those easy balls that you're looking for if you're a Razorback. Well, the score, 18-10 in favor of Arkansas. We'll step away here in set number three. More when we return. Welcome back here to Barnhill Arena. I'm Stephen Blackson. Alongside me, Caitlin Donahoe. As Lauren Evans will be at the service line once again. Coming into the night, had 27 aces on the year. One shy now of 30 on the season. As Pancake there from Gracie Ryan. We'll keep this point alive. Yeah. 
as that one will go out of the back and be a point for Florida. Cartwright not in a great position to take a big swing. Those are those times where, hey, you just either give it to the setter on the other side of the net, maybe just aim for those deep corners. You're not going to put it away when the ball's about 10 feet off. Archibong trying the middle, nothing there. Monzeray has it covered. And Sporte trying to drop one in, looking for her first kill of the match. And won't get one there as it'll be another kill for Maggie Cartwright, number five for her, and she'll check out. And Hannah Hogue will check in in her spot and head to the service line. You know, we talked about Forte, middle blocker for the Gators a lot last night, really not seeing that same level of play between her and Monterey here tonight. She was such a factor last night and really struggling just to get some connection. And a big block there for Gracie Ryan. That's 5-9 going up <laughs> against 6-1 there at the pin. I'm sure that's got to feel good, especially after last night. The Gators were really taking advantage of the smaller right side pin, which is Arkansas. Gracie Ryan really turning around here tonight. Forte will get her first kill of the night. But the Razorbacks only five points away from a set number three victory. Now Caesar just able to get onto that one. Cross court set, attack will put the ball in play. Caesar fighting, that one gonna come over by us and a big kill for Arkansas is Coach Mary Wise pleading with the official on a double touch on Arkansas. Yes, they're having uh, some lengthy conversation here, not loving the second contact from Ryan. I thought it was pretty good, but clearly Mary Wise does not agree. Those are those kind of plays you can't, you can't challenge a double attack. There's only certain things you can challenge, you know, your objective calls, you're in, out, uh, touch, no touch. So there's not a really a whole lot you can do when you're not getting those doubles when you think you should be. Checking into the game and attacking there, number four, Sophia Victoria. And she'll get the block. Coming in off the bench and making an immediate impact, Caitlin. Saw a little bit of her play last night, did a nice job. You know, she, uh, older sister, Pilar Victoria, who did great things here at Arkansas. And that'll be Bree Kelly on the block as Florida trims this to a seven point lead for the Razorbacks. That'll be Kelly's third block on the night. as Jill Gillen gets another kill, 13 for her. Three away now from a set victory. Great set, great swing, taking advantage of that late middle blocker. Brie Kelly didn't quite get all the way over and Gillen decides to go angle to put it away. And Gillen going to drop that one in front of libero Ellie McKissick for another kill. As Gillen heating up here in set number three. Having a really nice night so far, hitting around 250, which is what you want as an outside hitter. And 
it'll be set point off the attacking area there by Sophia Victoria. See the Razorbacks still going after whoever that front row outside hitter is. So they have to hit, but they also have to pull back and pass. We know it's a lot harder when you have to uh, pass before you swing. And the block this time successful for Bree Kelly. Or excuse me, unsuccessful. As it'll be Monzere at the service line. Florida staying alive. As that one tipped over for Bree Kelly. And the Gators trying to cling on to life here in set number three. Awesome set by Montserrat. She was facing the net, which is typically what you don't want to do as a setter. You want to be always facing that left side pin, but that was really all she can do. And dishes a nice set for Kelly to put it away. An old 3 0 run here for Sophia Victoria on that kill. Trims the lead back down to seven for the Razorbacks. Victoria coming in off the bench, making an impact here in set number three. And that'll be an ace. Make it a six-point lead for the Razorbacks as Monzere able to force the Razorbacks into a mistake. Monterey really keeping the pressure on, going after it. In these kind of situations, you can, right? You don't really have a lot to lose. It's set point. Might as well go after it. And that'll be how set number three ends with a kill from Jill Gillen, her 15th on the night. And we'll go to set four. Went we away from the service line. And looks like there's a little miscommunication <laughs> on the rotation. And as T.R. Caesar will go to the front row and we'll get ready to play in set number four. Yeah, you don't want to start off in the wrong spot. It causes a whole lot of issues. And first blood will go to Florida as Monzeray with that quick attack in the middle. Arkansas still going after uh, those outside hitters serving wise. A nice heads up play by Monzeray to put it away. Be Monzeray's first kill of the match. As Joe Gilling going to pick up where she left off in set number three with another kill here in set four. Awesome job, just kind of sneaking it through the block, finding that high seam, so in between middle blocker and right side blocker. Point for Florida. I like those decisions, Crumpton doing a nice job on that first swing. Second ball was a little bit too low. I'm sure they're talking about that a bit, but I'd like to see a little bit something different, maybe just place it in a good spot because you're not going to hit that ball. Uh, you're not going to get a kill, especially when the ball doesn't clear the tape. And a block there from Jill Gillen. All 5-7 of Jill Gillen getting up on the block. You know, that really just does to show how important handwork is blocking wise. At five foot seven, she has an amazing vertical. I think she touches uh, definitely something over 10 foot five, but she does such a good job pressing low and over the net. That's what causes those balls to come straight back down. And an error there for Tiaras. 
Caesar. We'll give another point to the Razorbacks as they improve to three and two in set number four. I like that spot from head, finding that deep right back corner. As Dooley very clearly in the net on that attack. Give the point to Arkansas as they grow their lead to two. Arkansas still going after the outside hitters passing wise. You can see that ball was set or was passed really tight. Really the only place Montserrat could go was to her middle hitter and everything was just a little bit too tight. The Gators are really going to have to start keeping things off the net uh, to, in order to find success. There, Hall with a kill for the first time in a while for the Gators. And it'll send Monzere back to the service line. A sen senior from Windermere, Florida. And Crumpton working the middle once more for the kill. She'll be replaced by Archibong. And Lauren Evans will check in for the libero, Courtney Jackson. As Lauren Evans, Caitlin, worked really well from the service line through three sets for the Razorbacks. Evans, an awesome player, has played a couple of different roles at Arkansas from uh, start to finish, one of those being, uh, I know a, a couple points in time she led the team in aces with a, getting another ace there. I think she's set before, at least maybe in high school. I know uh, just from watching their practice, she has great hands, she can hit, she can pass, she can really do it all. Well, that's her 30th ace on the season, but she'll commit the error there and give the ball back to Florida. Nice swing by Beeson on that cross-court attack. That's a really nice job finding that left sideline. And Taylor Head off speed will find some open court, Head gives do, her 11. Head doing a nice job going up as if she were to take any uh, attack, or I mean, uh, her typical attack, rather really disguising the play into the very last second. And looked like Florida and Tierra Caesar were lobbying that one hit some Arkansas hands, but to no avail as it'll be a serve for Hannah Hogue. And she'll commit a service error. Arkansas has been doing a better job uh, in sets three and now early in set four, managing those service errors. I know there's just an error there, but that was what we call a good error, right? It was deep, it wasn't too deep. Um, it was after a string of a couple of good serves. You gotta, in order to uh, be playing most efficiently, you gotta mix in a couple errors in there. Archibald will get kill number five on the night as the Razorbacks a few times here in set number four. Caitlin have worked the middle of the Florida team. Totally, you can tell that the Razorbacks, part of their game plan is establishing that middle early in this set, puts more pressure on the Gator defense. Costly service error for Taylor Head. We'll put the ball in Merritt Beeson's hands. Again, reigning freshman of the week in the Southeastern Conference. Now she'll send that one long. A lot of service errors here in this fourth set so far. That'll be the ninth for Florida. Beeson second in the match. Oh 
As Arkansas looked a little out of sorts on that point. As T.R. Caesar will serve for the Gators. And a block for Florida from Bree Kelly at a big moment. Makes this a two-point set number four. When that pass is off the net like that, you know Crumpton is not in the game plan. It makes it really easy for Kelly to set up for a nice block. Soft serve. It will be handled by Jackson. And Crumpton will get up to block it, but that one will fall out of play for the kill for Thayer Hall. Puts her at double figures on the night. Another soft serve from Tiara Caesar. As Joe Gillen will hit that off the fingers of the Florida block. Gives her 17 kills on the night. Nice placement. Uh, of that set there, getting it all the way to the pin. That set, or the pass was on the right side of the court. It has a lot of ways to travel. Uh, Ryan puts it in a good spot for Gillen to put it away. Gillen hitting 250 through four sets as Caesar will get kill 14 on the night. Caesar has been so effective in the back row, especially in that right back position. It's a little bit different angle than we typically see when we see a back row attack is typically from middle back but Caesar been doing a really nice job uh, in the right back. Florida within a point in set number four as Caesar tried to lay out off the block but Arkansas will extend to make it a 12-10 set number four. Cartwright uh, we know Plays on the right side. It looked like on that play, though, she was going for more of the slide attack, so off of one foot, which we haven't seen too much of. Fair Hall going to hit that one right at Jill Gillen, and Jill won't be able to handle it. Those are really tough to dig when you're not getting any sort of touch on the block. Hall's been having a really nice night here on Saturday. Uh, you got to get something to slow it down a bit. You're asking a lot of your blockers when it's uh, – you have a big hole in the block. As that one will go out of play, and set number four now knotted at 12 apiece. Last night, like you mentioned, with Fair Hall, hit a measly 0.56 last night, but this night's turned it into a 303 hitting percentage with 11 kills so far in the match, turning it around today. As Caesar going to loft that one in, gives her 15 on the night, two away from the total she got here last night. The red shirt senior just shows sh just great court awareness, knowing what's going on. She's in the middle back position. She recognizes that the blocker is coming from her left, meaning there's nobody defending that short left front. Uh, just makes it a nice, easy kill. And that one can go over our heads, Caitlin. <laughs> and into the stands and we went up and hit some of the banners here at Barnhill Arena off that attack for Maggie Cartwright. And it'll send Lauren Evans back to the service line who's by far been the best server for both teams in this one with three aces but it'll be a kill for Florida as both teams inching towards 15. Nice pass set hit from the Gators. Uh, as I mentioned before, middle blocker is the most difficult position. You never know who they're going to set. Archibong was a little bit late to that block, uh, essentially putting Beeson in a one-on-one -on -one situation. Taylor Head will terminate for kill number 12. As Hannah Hogue will check back in, Maggie, Maggie Cartwright will head to the bench. As look like there's a little bit of moisture on the court. 
SEC Defensive Player of the Week, Ellie McKissick, will clean it up. And we'll get back underway with Hogue at the service line. Hannah yet to record an ace on the season. As Dooley will tuck that one in. And Florida the first to 15 in set number four. Not much between these two sides as it's 15-14 Florida. We'll pause and have the rest of set number four when we return. Good job, 15. And McKissick able to dig that attack out from Jill Gillen. And that one will fall out of play as Merritt Beeson will get another kill on the night, give her seven. Saw a couple of good defensive plays for the Razorbacks, just couldn't keep that one uh, on their side of the net. And Gillen will get called with the lift. Not much she could do in that situation, just trying to get something over, because that was her third hit for the Razorbacks. And Coach Watson wants an explanation from the officiating team here tonight. Yeah, the Gator bench and coaching staff have been pretty vocal about uh, what they think is a double, and they seem pretty relieved that uh, we got a double call there, but Watson does not agree. And Watson will take a timeout after talking it over with the officials. As he's not happy with that call. Normally a, a very calm Jason Watson, <laughs> but I think he understands the significance of uh, tonight with a victory. More than likely Arkansas would do just enough to get off the bubble and get into the, the field for the NCAA tournament in a couple weeks. Totally. And we know uh, a one-point one point advantage is really a two-point swing, right, with rally scoring. Um, so 16-15 feels a whole lot different than 17-14. Uh, well, in this timeout break, I mentioned Caitlin both teams just trying to reset. Coach Watson probably break the concentration a little bit of the Florida Gators. All right, I'm sure they're talking about, you know, we just need one side out, then we'll control the game a little bit behind the service line, get an opportunity to get them out of system. But before they can do that, uh, they need a kill here to stop this Gator run. Well, it looks like the Gators are ready to go. They're feeling it here on 80s night as Ellie McKissick will head back to serve. And McKissick will get us back underway. As Taylor Head really trying a tight angle there, unsuccessful for her to be a point for the Gators, Caitlin. Yeah, it looked like Head was going for that uh, cut shot, something that we see a lot in beach volleyball, but it never cleared the tape. It would have been a good idea if it would have gone over. You know, Caesar taking that first ball would make it difficult for her to swing, but it didn't. And looks like no hands or, or nobody touched the ball for Florida there. And the ball will stay with the Gators as McKissick working from the service line. Defensive player of the week last week in the conference. As Florida trying to get to 20 points in set number four. And Will off of that block. Look like 
you know, when you're coming from the other direction, got to do a 180, go the other way. Really need your teammates to be able to help you out, call it in or out, because you really have no idea. It looked like Ryan would have been there, but uh, potentially thought she thought that ball was out. Miscommunication costing Arkansas there. But Taylor Head makes up for it with another kill. Give her 13 for the evening. Nice cross-court shot there, finding the left sideline. Much more productive night for Taylor. Last night only had 10 kills and hit 147. So now has 13. As that one looked like it might have been going out off of Beeson's attack. And that one will go out of play as Monzere can't handle it. As Arkansas trims it to four. And a costly out of rotation violation for the Gators. So uh, typically set up uh, where you need to be in as soon as the well, Welcome back here in set four. I'm Stephen Blackston alongside with former Hurricane Caitlin Donahoe. As we have another native Floridian at the service line. Taylor Head looking to get us back underway. As the deficit has been trimmed to three after the rotation error from Florida. And out of the timeout, Florida taking advantage. Kill there by Tiara Caesar. First time she's had a kill in a minute. As Bertie Hendrickson will check into the match. First time she's seen any action today or last night. And a big error there is Bertie's foot on the line. Will be a free point back to Arkansas. Never easy coming off the bench, especially coming in to, to serve. A little bit cold, right? Different gym. You don't know how far away things are, but you know, to start a, yourself off, give yourself a whole lot of room. Just a, a costly mistake there. Razorbacks able to play this one over. As they were clearly out of system. And a middle attack will net a kill from Elise Crumpton. Awesome play, and what a spectacular dig by Hogue to keep that ball alive. And I really like that choice from Ryan going to Crumpton. I was just thinking we're getting a little bit outside heavy for the Razorbacks. Need to get the middles involved a little bit more. Free up your pins a little bit more, and Ryan does just that, setting up Crumpton for the kill. Gives Crumpton nine on the night. She's hitting 350 for the match. Razorbacks flirting with that 200 number right at 195. And Florida hitting 224 for the match. So both teams evenly matched as the scoreboard would reflect. And as Arkansas trying to chip out a few more points of this Florida advantage. And a block again from Jill Gillen. Getting up there for the block solo makes this a one point set number four. Oh my goodness, how amazing. That's gotta feel good. We talk about it all the time, but Gil is certainly an undersized player, but doesn't play like she is. She's getting up and over in a one on one situation. The ball is going straight down. Just really fantastic play. And especially now, you know, it's. 2021 20, things are getting tight those are those big plays we talk about volleyball as a game of momentum and that's that big favorite target on serves has been tiara caesar we'll see caitlin if she goes back to her out of this timeout and indeed she will
Joust at the net. And that's going to be a point for Arkansas, tied up at 21 apiece in set four. As Mary Wise is going to challenge the point here, Caitlin. Mary Wise not happy with that call. I saw the net rattling quite a bit as they're taking another look. And it uh, looks to me at least that Brie Kelly did catch the top of the tape there. I expect this to be a pretty quick review. Well, we'll see as SEC using experimental rules. You challenge, you lose it, you lose it for the match. If you win, you can keep it in your pocket for the rest of the night until you need it again. Last night, saw Coach Watson challenge a few times and was successful, I believe, on all of his challenges last night. All right, that new experimental rule, I'm hoping it's here to stay as it, it makes it, you know, allows you to use those challenges early when you're really adamant that you are correct because if you don't, get to keep it, then uh, you want to save them for later in the game. And the point will stay with Arkansas as an unsuccessful challenge for Mary Wise. We'll keep things knotted at 21 apiece. Have to get to 25 by two to win the set. As Lauren Jackson Gets us back underway. And Arkansas has their first lead as Mary Wise coming onto the court, not happy with the officials here. So the call was a lift, right? You got to keep your hand behind the ball, just pushing toward it. None of a can't go from under and over again, and it can't really stick to your fingers. So thinking that up official saw it stick to her fingers just a little bit too long to get that lift call. 5-0 run for the Razorbacks. We'll end there as we're tied back at 22 apiece. As Tiara Caesar gets a crucial kill for her team. We have Caesar behind the line. We know she likes to play, or she plays that right back position here. Be curious to see if the Razorback hitters go after that right back uh, for the swing here. Caesar on the attack will get the kill and puts Florida back in front. Be a timeout from Jason Watson. Again, we see just a, a veteran play there. I'm sure she could have taken a big swing, but she decides to go the, the safe and. Welcome back out of the Jason Watson Arkansas timeout. We have Kiara Caesar for Florida at the service line as Florida now two points away from a set for victory. Looking to send this one to five. And that'll be set point for Florida. You know, as much as you want to get that big swing uh, as a Razorback to get the momentum on your side, that set was just too low. You got to go with the smart play there, maybe find some open court elsewhere because the Gators are going to be all over that block for that low swing. And the set will go to Florida. The Gators withstand the run. From the Razorbacks, we'll have the winner take all set five when we return.
Well, welcome back to the winner-take-all set number five here at Barnhill Arena between the number 22 Florida Gators and the Arkansas Razorbacks. I'm Stephen Blackiston. Alongside me, Caitlin Donahoe. Caitlin, we've gone the distance to five sets. As a player, when you get to that fifth set, what's going through your head trying to come out with the victory? You know, you're just thinking one point out of time. Certainly 15 is a whole lot different than 25. Um, but it's really not as a player because you're always just taking it one point at a time, uh, controlling what you can control. But it certainly feels good to get out ahead early. So you can imagine both teams are going to try to build that early lead as it makes things a whole lot easy later on. Again, like you mentioned, play to 15, win by two, and set number five. As Courtney Jackson gets us underway, Arkansas won the coin toss to serve first. But Florida will score first here in set number one. Perfect pass delivered by Hall. Sets up the Gators well. All three options, a perfect set, perfect swing, really difficult to defend. Only the eighth time that Florida and Arkansas have gone to five sets in the series history as the service error will make it a one apiece game. Gracie Ryan, one of the two Floridians on the team at the service line. And that'll be a kill for Bree Kelly, the freshman having a great night tonight. Give her nine on the evening. Really smart play from the freshman using the blocker's hands to her advantage. Looked like she could have gone up for the swing, but instead goes for the smart shot. Kelly hitting 471 for the match. Pancake there from Tiara Caesar. Will set up a kill for Thayer Hall. And Florida has the early 3-1 lead in set five. Really great adjustment from Caesar. She's been struggling a bit on those tips. Uh, would have thought that was a great shot by Gillen, but with Caesar's adjustment, she's able to dig it. Razor back, so reset. Cartwright will try again, and she'll find pay dirt. Give her eight kills on the night, Caitlin. I like that high swing from Cartwright. We haven't seen a whole lot of her in uh, this match, but does a nice job finding that high seam to get that deep line kill. Slower serve there from Gillen at 37 miles an hour. As that one not going to touch any hands. But Jason Monson, head coach for the Razorbacks, has the green card in hand, and he'll challenge. Joe Gillen, I believe, immediately turned <laughs> to Coach Watson and said, challenge it, uh, as that one hit some hands. Yeah, I was pretty shocked that there wasn't a touch call from anyone, at least from our perspective. It looked like that ball changed direction, so they go high out of bounds, meaning there would uh, be a touch. And again, like you mentioned in the last set, this challenge very important, a two-point swing if it goes in favor of the Razorbacks, ties this set up at three apiece. Totally, especially on these ones where it wouldn't result in a replay, but in, in fact a point for the other side, like you mentioned. Two-point swing and set five uh, against, you know, some tightly contested matches. It doesn't get much closer than that. As we take another look here, Caitlin, it's always so difficult to see. For some reason, I think it's harder to see when it's slowed down versus the real-time call, which, which makes it tough. tough. Uh, if you don't get it the first time, you need enough evidence to make it clear that it's the uh, opposite call, right? And looks like we have a decision. We'll see. Point will remain with Florida as Jason Watson not happy. A little more calmly talking to the official than we've <laughs> seen uh, head coach Mary Wise tonight. Yeah, needing that conclusive evidence to overturn 
is really tough when we're talking uh, touch, no touch. Ball will stay with Trinity Adams and the Gators. Esther Hall going to have her attack blocked. Great rally here from both sides. And it'll end with a Thayer Hall kill as both teams scratching and clawing here in set five to keep the point alive. Felt like both teams were keeping everything really tight to the net. There was a lot of tipping back and forth. I'm thinking that both coaches are thinking, hey, let's pass high and off the net. Give us a chance to run our offense instead of a whole lot of ping pong back and forth. Uh, looks like a net violation for the Gators, either at middle blocker, Dooley, or Thayer Hall. It's kind of tough to see from our angle, but a costly mistake uh, gives the Razorbacks a point. It'll send Orrin Evans to the service line. As Dooley will find some open space on that attack and get the kill. Dooley, like you mentioned, Caitlin, a senior on this team, has seen reduced playing time, but tonight has gotten some great points for her team. Totally. She's come. Uh, she's started some of these sets. She's come from off the bench, but you can't tell which is which. Still extremely engaged and making a big impact for the Gators. Gators lead by three here in set five. And Maggie Cartwright tucks that one inside the line to get the ball back on her side of the net. Cartwright with that slide attack again, kind of that off the one foot from the right side. Seen this all night where Cartwright will check out and Hogue will check in at the service line. As that'll be a kill for Taylor Head. I think she surprised herself even there a little <laughs> bit as that ball went off the block and out of play. Totally. The Razorbacks were running that one all the way down, and it just misses the line. And like you said, a kill for head. And that'll be a point for Florida. Couple of trading a pair of back row attacks. You can hear the Gator bench was not happy. They they thought that uh, Gillen's initial attack never made it over the net, but play continued and they got the point regardless. Head trying to go cross court, but Caesar will have it measured. And that one will go off the tape and out of play for Beeson. It'll give a point to Arkansas as they stay within touching distance of the Gators. I like that play from Head. The set was a little bit too low. She decides it wasn't the most aggressive shot in the whole world, but really smart, decides to go to Caesar. They have to set somebody different, a little bit out of system, and result in a point for Arkansas. And Beeson playing around. Joe Gillen gets the kill. As Florida will reach eight first, halfway home here in set number five. Florida with a two-point advantage, 8-6. The conclusion of set number five when we come back.
Welcome back. Out of the media timeout. Florida has the 8-6 lead with Ellie McKissick at the service line. McKissick doesn't have an ace on the night, and the Gators only have two for the match. As they're seven points away from a match victory. Monsray keeps that one alive for the Gators. As Jill Gillen gets killed 20 on the night, and it couldn't come at a bigger time for the home team. Totally. And what a great, smart shot, taking some off it, finding the middle of the court, which we know is open. And, you know, I've really been impressed by Hogue's defense out of right back. We saw a lot of uh, balls last night go to that deep right back position, but Hogue's really been handling it well here tonight for the Razorbacks. And Tiara Caesar gets her 20th kill of the match as well, showing you why she's the co-SEC player of the week. Yeah, that ball's coming really fast, uh, especially from the outside hitter to the right back position. It's such a short distance. You need to try to get some touch on the block to help your defenders out a bit. And another kill for Tiara Caesar. Back-to-back -back kills for her. Put Florida in double figures, five points away from closing this one out. And Jason Watson will take a timeout for Arkansas. Try and regroup here, Caitlin, deep into set five. The Gators are doing really well in set five. A couple of different reasons, but the one I'm thinking about most is that they're just in system. Uh, they're getting a nice first ball pass, giving Monterey all of her options. And when the Gators are in system, they're a really fantastic team, uh, hitting 444 this set. And if we had the passing stats as well, I'm sure it'd be perfect threes across the board, uh, meaning you have all three options available. And um, yeah, uh, Arkansas is really going to need to work to get them out of system, whether it be behind the service line or attacking wise, because. Uh, just too easy for them right now. I think we've seen in set four and here in set five when Arkansas has been at the service line, they've gone away from attacking Caesar and Hall, and McKissick's been able to get in front of a lot of these serves. You know, better defensive player, better player to maybe set things up for an attack going the other way. You're right, and when the ball is going to the outside hitters, it seems like uh, either Caesar and Hall are doing a much better job passing or the Razorbacks are taking a little bit off it serving wise um, but either way going to need to see a little bit more pressure from the Razorbacks if they want to take this fifth set in the match. The Razorbacks are ready to play out on the floor and the Gators are as well. It'll be Merritt Beeson at the service line. We'll see what adjustments both sides have made both teams have one timeout left here in set five is Gracie Ryan with a costly service error there. We'll give the ball back to Florida. As Tiara Caesar will get us back underway. The ninth service error for the Razorbacks, but a costly error on the other side for Tiara Caesar. Will bail Gracie Ryan out there, Caitlin. You're right. You know, and as much as the service errors hurt, um, when you're a team like Arkansas that has to serve aggressive, as long as it's an aggressive mistake, it's not the end of the world because it's the same thing as just getting an easy pass for the Gators. You know that they're going to terminate. Joe Gillen able to play off the block. And a big smash from Elise Crumpton ties this one at 11. Elise Crumpton doing such a nice job, just always being available. I always talk about how difficult the middle position is because you're going from pin to pin blocking. It makes it really difficult to always be up in transition as an option every time. She has been 
transitioning up and off the net every time, giving the option for Ryan to go to her to get that kill. Crumpton gets to double figure kills. One of the four seniors on this team would like to beat Florida tonight. But it'll be a point for the Gators as they sneak back out in front. Caesar is such a force from that right back position. Does such a nice job with her leap. It almost seems like she's in the front row. It's hard to tell. Uh, does such a nice job clearing that net and clearing the blockers for the kill. Freshman Trinity Adams to serve. And the point will go to the Razorbacks as Mary Wise can use her second challenge tonight. Almost jumped whenever <laughs> the official's hand went towards the Arkansas side of the court. Yes, it looks like Mary Wise is pretty adamant that there was no touch on the block. Uh, there was no touch from the line official. However, the up official is right there. You could assume she has a pretty good look on it. It did look like that ball changed direction. Um, but uh, we'll have uh, another look here to see. Again, so hard to see if there was a touch or not. It's hard to tell. It hits the net, so it you know distorts the camera a little bit to add to the suspense here. <laughs> And you need that conclusive evidence to overturn the play, making it critical what the first call was. And again, a situation where it can be a point swing either way. As it stands, it would tie the match, but if it goes in favor of the Gators, makes this a 13-11 set number five, as Florida would be two points away from the victory. As you see there, the replay officials looking it over closely. Yes, this is certainly that do or tie time. 12-12 versus 13-11, like you mentioned, are really different situations. You have to imagine if it's 13-11, uh, if Watson will use that second timeout to regroup and kind of talk things over versus 12-12 where you're just playing on trying to get that next point. The official is taking their time here, make sure that they're making sure they get the call right. As it's a pivotal juncture here in this match. Razorbacks with a win, as looks like a decision's been made, Razorbacks with a win would likely be in the NCAA tournament. We'll see what the call is. Point will stay with Arkansas. Match tied at 12 apiece. Mary Wise wants an explanation. And she can't believe it. Yeah, she, as you can tell, she's not thrilled with the call. But again, you need that conclusive evidence to overturn, making that whatever the first call was so important because obviously it's a whole lot harder to overturn something than to keep it as is. Man, who else at the service line? Number five, Lauren Evans has 30 aces on the season and I'm sure the Razorback faithful would love 31 here. But Thayer Hall has it played and measured and that one out of the back. Arkansas has their first lead in set number five, two points away from home. Haven't seen a whole lot of action offensively from Dooley. Interesting uh, choice going to Dooley in this uh, tense situation. I, I like the choice, just, you know, inches, centimeters really away from finding that deep line. Mary Wise takes Florida's last time out. As she heads over to talk to her players. Just two points for Arkansas, three points for Florida. Separate 
one of the two from a victory tonight. All right, these We've talked about it, but both of these teams playing so well this evening. So much back and forth. Uh, the stats really say it. Both teams hitting around 250 and 280 for the uh, Florida Gators and the Arkansas Razorbacks, respectively, in this fifth set, uh, which isn't surprising due to the back and forth nature that we've been seeing. Again, the all-time record between these two teams. Florida leads it 47 to three. But when the two get together and it goes five sets, the Razorbacks are two and five against Florida looking to get win number three. And it would come at a big time as Coach Watson and the Razorbacks trying to keep their season alive. Yeah, these uh, big games against ranked opponents. Those are really your opportunities to solidify your place in the NCAA tournament. We've talked about it before. Arkansas is certainly a bubble team. Feel good to walk away with a win here, knowing that gets you one step closer to making it to the NCAA tournament. Well, Lauren Evans will get us back underway. As Evans tried to lay out for the pancake, but we're tied once again. Hall having a really nice night. I like that choice going high hands. Gives her her 14th kill, hitting almost 300 here this evening. Marley Monzere at the service line for the Gators. Remember, have to win by two. As Mons are able to dig out that Cartwright attack. And Florida will inch back ahead. Match point for the Gators as Marley Monzere heads back to the line. And I believe it'll be Jason Watson's final timeout as well. Don't get to take him with you, so might as well use him here. As I'm sure the coaching staff are both sides. We want to make sure all the I's are dotted and T's are crossed <laughs> for the first match point at Barnhill tonight. Yes, uh, we've seen a whole lot of back and forth. The Gators have Dooley at the net as a blocking presence. You can imagine that they're talking a little bit of schematics on their side where they're thinking the ball's gonna go to set her up in a good position to get a stuff block because we know she certainly has it in her. She's a fantastic a blocker. So as long as Monterey can serve aggressive, that certainly helps her out a whole lot to be in a good position to try to take away this match. As a player, when it's this close in set number five, how do you keep the emotions in check, the nerves in check as you have to go out and win one more point. You know, you recognize it's a big point. You, you talk about it, and then you just get back to playing volleyball, right? You don't want to ignore the moment because the moment is the moment. Um, but yeah, you're just, you know, taking it one step at a time. You're thinking about the basics, right? Straight arms, hands together, and just don't let the ball hit the floor. Out of the timeout, it'll be match point for Florida. They'll be serving. It'll be Marley Monzere operating again. And how fitting, Caitlin, when we talked to Coach Wise earlier this week, we asked her about Marley Monzere. She said, how much time do you have? Because she <laughs> could go on for hours and hours. You can really tell just by watching her. Such a leader on the court. We know the setter position is typically has those qualities, but really, she really embodies what it means to be a true uh, senior center. And Arkansas not dead yet. Crucial kill there from Taylor Head, her 15th. I love that. Going back to Head. We saw she had the error, the point before, but going back to her really just shows the trust you have in your hitters to get the job done. Hannah Hogue, the freshman, playing in only her second match. Have a clean serve. 
And that'll be a point towards Florida. Importantly, have to win by two, so match point again. As Thayer Hall will go to the service stripe. Look like Archibong uh, maybe was just a little bit too late to the block. She was in the right spot, but couldn't quite get there. Courtney Jackson laying out to keep this one alive. And that's how the match will end. Tiara Caesar able to get one more kill, give her 23 on the night, as Florida will be victorious, winning set number five, 16 14, and improving their record to 17 and 6. As the signature win doesn't come this weekend for the Razorbacks, but Florida moves on to take on Auburn, South Carolina, and Kentucky. And Coach Wise now only four wins away, Caitlin, from that 1,000 milestone. Really impressive. But, you know, Arkansas didn't go down without a fight. Obviously, 16-14 in the fifth doesn't get much closer than that. We saw um, a whole lot of back and forth. Both teams very close statistically, both hovering around that 200 marker hitting-wise. But ultimately, Florida coming away with the win. That was a thrilling finish here in Barnhill on night two of the double header. Florida will win the match three to two. Sweep Arkansas this weekend for Caitlin Donahoe. I'm Stephen Blackson. Have a safe and sound night as the Razorbacks will move on to take on the Texas A&M Aggies and Florida will take on the Auburn Tigers next.